Cops and lawyers, guns and money. Garrett, welcome to Conduct Detrimental. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. How's everything going? Yeah, pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, as uh, Dan and I have mentioned, uh, it was a huge get for the podcast to get you on. Uh, I know that we've been following the case for a number of years. So uh, when you were the one, I believe the one that broke the, the news that the Supreme Court had ruled uh, on your case, that they were allowing it to proceed the trial court level, um, we thought of you right away. So um, I guess, uh, you know, we, we're familiar with your background. Um, just briefly, and then I'm going to kind of ask you to fill in some gaps. Uh, I know that uh, you played at the uh, University of Missouri with uh, Max Scherzer, Ian Kinsler, fifth round draft pick of uh, my San Francisco Giants. I don't know if you knew that I was a fan. Um, my dad grew up as a Willie Mays New York Giants fan, so I'm like the only New York uh, San Francisco Giants fan. But um, yeah, I know you, you played, uh, you know, you were up here by my neck of the woods in, in uh, Connecticut for the Connecticut Defenders. Um, but yeah, you're more, more recently known uh, as a graduate of St. Louis Law School. Uh, and now uh, you're the lead, you represent the lead uh, minor leaguer in this lawsuit. Um, that's a, a uh, well, I'll let you paint it for everybody, but it's a lawsuit to try to change the compensation for minor leaguers. So um, if you could give, give our listeners a brief background about yourself uh, and really what this litigation is, and then we can kind of parse that, parse that out. Yeah, so I, I appreciate that intro, and and like I said, it's a pleasure to be be on here and give you a, a, just a two minute background. Um, you know, so I did, I did. I started at the University of Missouri. I was lucky enough to play with some great players there. You mentioned Ian Kinsler, mentioned Scherzer. Um, you forgot though, Jace Tingler. Jace Tingler was there, and he's current. Well, he might be. Well, he, I guess he's not managing as we speak, but yeah, he's he's um, he's having a good little uh, postseason in his first year uh, as a manager for the Padres. Um, so yeah, I was lucky to play with some some great players there and some great leaders there, and for the most part, my career was pretty mediocre, to, just to be nice about it. Um, but then my last year, I just put together this really really good season, where all of a sudden I was eleven and zero, um, and was both an academic All American and an All American, and just I don't know, sometimes things just come together like that. And um, I was drafted by the San Francisco Giants in the fifth round and began my uh, pro career at that point. And, you know, right away, um, things just felt a little off. Um, in a lot of ways, it seemed like a step down from good college baseball. Not necessarily in the on-field play, but just the, the way players were treated. You know, when I was at the University of Missouri, um, you know, I, I didn't have a lavish apartment by any means. I just had a normal college apartment and you know, I had two roommates, we each had our own bedroom, and we actually had beds. And, and all of a sudden, I'm in Pro Bowl, and I'm sleeping on a futon in somebody's basement. Um, and I'm getting, you know, 20 bucks a day for meal money. Whereas when I was at the University of Missouri, I was getting 35 bucks a day for meal money. I'm like, really? Wait, I'm, you know, I'm playing for the San Francisco Giants, their system now, and I'm supposed to be getting a paycheck now. Uh, but I'm treated worse than when I was in college. And so, you know, it's one of those things that Initially, you, you don't really say anything about it. You just grit your teeth and keep working and, um, and just ignore it because you're a bit starry-eyed. But, you know, as things got, went on, um, guys started talking about it a little more. You know, there were a lot of rumblings about how, you know, well, for instance, there was one time I asked the bat boy how much he was making in a given game. And this is when I was in double A, my first year in double A, and he told me he was making 55 bucks that day. Uh, for like four hours of work that was more than I was making that day it's crazy so that's when it really sunk in that the bat boy was making more money than me and something was just wrong about that so yeah my last year playing when it became apparent that um, you know I was definitely just a roster filler and was not making to the major leagues started studying for law school um, and you know picked up a study guide for the LSAT at Borders, uh, rest in peace, and started studying on the bus rides while it was still in the minor leagues for the LSAT and took it four days uh, after my final game, which was not the best way to take the LSAT at all. I do not recommend that to any listeners out there, uh, <laughs> but it worked out. And, uh, you know, I, I did well in law school and got on at a great firm, Coron Tillery here in St. Louis. And um, you know, for the past six years now, which is incredible to think about, six years we have been uh, doing this case. 